Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm your host, Pat Sun, and today we're going to be taking a look at r slash relationship advice, where a husband is demanding a paternity test. Let's begin. The girl I was dating dumped me because she said I was cheap. Posted by Reddit user New Papaya. So I've been dating a girl for about three months. We live about an hour away from each other. I thought it was going great, but today she ended it. She said that she didn't want to be in a relationship where she never gets treated or where it's 100% reciprocal. She said I came across as cheap and she felt now was a good time to end it. I have never considered myself cheap, so I was quite surprised by this. She never came across as wanted to take advantage of me. We split every dinner and every drink day. When we got a takeaway meal, I got it one week and she got it another. When we did activities such as bowling or the cinema, she paid for those things because I drove to her town. I did most of the driving because I live in a small town with no real fun activities whereas her town has loads. I didn't ask her to pay she offered and it seemed fair because I drove the hour and back. She mentioned that I've never brought her anything but we've been dating for three months, why would I? It's not like she got me stuff, just treats for my dog once. So it doesn't seem fair she is calling me cheap. When I pointed this out, she said that I earn more than her and she doesn't have the money to treat me but that she did things like cook me dinner and drive to mine when she can. I asked my friends about this and it's pretty evenly split that I was the asshole or that she was trying to take advantage. Some said that she was being a hypocrite and some said that I should be trying to make a good impression. One said that I came across as an asshole. They all seemed surprised that I never took her out for dinner and paid for us both. But I'm surprised about that because why should I pay for both our dinners just because I'm a man? I'm pretty gutted as I really liked her. So was I the asshole in this situation? It's funny how women will demand for equality but whine and complain when they receive it. What's also funny is that I treat my friends more than you treated your girlfriend, OP. Listen, young man. There is no problem with splitting the cost when dating, but it is a good gesture to treat people occasionally to show your appreciation. And to me, it seems like that she can't afford it, so instead she made dinner for you on multiple occasions. OP, don't be stingy with women. There is nothing simpy about treating your woman properly. You only become a disgusting spineless simp if you continue to give, even if she's disrespecting you. Good luck on your next relationship, man. And now for today's second story. My wife doesn't approve of my brother's new significant other. Do I have a say in my brother's love life? Posted by Reddit user Phoenix. My wife and I met about four years ago and got married recently. My brother has had a great relationship and friendship with her ever since they met. My brother met someone through the apps not long ago and are hitting it off nicely. Both of us were very excited for him since he has had a hard time in the dating scene. We always have football watch parties at his place and he told us we would be able to meet her at the next one. We met her yesterday. Turns out, his new significant other is my wife's high school bully. When they met, they recognized each other cordially, maybe a bit awkward. But afterwards I could tell my wife was super uncomfortable. We made up an excuse and left early. On the way home, she told me about her bully, but not with a lot of detail. Before going to bed, she told me I needed to demand my brother that he stop seeing her. I know she was distressed, but I don't know if I can do this. My limited interaction with her was pleasant. There were no other obvious red flags from her bully I could detect. Maybe I could warn my brother about her, but I do not think I can make demands on his own love life. If someone came to me and demanded I stop seeing my wife when we started dating, I would have told them to fuck off. I can see this might strain their friendship. Any advice? Thanks in advance. And now, for OP's update. This is a short update and probably a frustrating one since it won't have a satisfying closure. My wife took back the demand the next morning. She apologized to me and said it was probably an extreme reaction to seeing her bully. We talked about what happened in high school and the next steps. Earlier in the week, we talked to my brother. We were frank and to the point. New significant other was a bully to my wife when they were in high school. My wife forgives her, but does not forget. If my brother and her are pursuing a serious relationship, that is fine by us and we won't get in the way, but also won't be around if she's there at a social event. We will see how it goes for big family events like Thanksgiving and or Christmas. If new significant other is truly remorseful and wants to apologize, she's open to that. My brother was mildly shocked, but seemed to empathize with my wife. 
So far she's been great to him and was seemingly a good person. He said he needed some time to know what to do with this info. Likely he wants to find out if new significant other is remorseful, because he definitely does not want to be in a relationship who is secretly a bully or is duplicitous about it. The talk ended in good terms, so we'll see what happens going forward. But I'm at peace knowing we did the mature thing. Thanks everyone for the advice. P.S. Some people were asking what did the bully do to my wife. I am not gonna go into detail about it. The purpose of the original post was to ask if we could interfere in my brother's love life, which was a resounding no, not to trauma dump my wife's personal struggles to internet strangers. OP, it sounds like that you and your wife have leveled off and found a reasonable approach. Well done to both of you, and your brother too. Three good people communicating with love and respect. Only time will tell now if their relationship will work out. And now for today's third story. My husband is demanding a paternity test, and I don't know if we can come back from this. Originally posted by Reddit user Coco. I'm sorry if this is rambling, but I don't even know what to think with this situation. Me and my husband have been together for 12 years and married for 6. We have a 2-year-old daughter and I'm 9 weeks pregnant. We have struggled with getting pregnant both times, 4 years for our daughter and a year and a half for this pregnancy. We know that he does have a lower sperm count than average but there was nothing else that had been noted as a barrier. This time, I had started a position as a social worker in the emergency department and I absolutely love it. But I see things that no one should see and on bad days, I don't want sex, which I think makes sense and I'm sometimes late from work, never more than two hours. My husband also left on a boy's vacation for a few days around the time I got pregnant. Something happened on this vacation and his mental health has been horrible since, not sleeping, easily agitated and everyone else on the trip says that something went wrong. But we're not sure what happened. Now, I get the positive test. I'm so excited. I can't wait to tell him. The day after I told him, he then accuses me of the baby not being his. I must have cheated instead of being at work light. I must have gone to a sperm bank because I wanted a child so badly. He wants a paternity test and, oh yeah, he tested our daughter because he now thinks she's not his either. I have never cheated. Never wanted to. I don't know where this is coming from. I asked what he would do if the test came back that the children were both his and he said say I'm sorry and try and make it up to you. He has talked to multiple people about his concerns that I may have cheated and they all tell him that I would never do that. Even his mother is telling him that he's out of line. I'm going to talk to my doctor about the non-invasive blood test because I know that I have nothing to hide. We are also going to start couples therapy in a couple of weeks. He didn't participate last time we tried but I have to at least try. But I don't know what to do. He tells me that he still loves me but I don't believe him. Is this it? Is this the end of our relationship? Because I don't know how to come back from this now that I know he doesn't trust me at all. How do I handle this? Edit. The boys were my father, my brother, my uncle and his cousin. They were out in a sailboat and on the last day of the trip, a hurricane was coming in. He freaked, wanting to go back into port while everyone else wanted to take advantage of the higher winds to get some real sailing in. He had a full-blown panic attack but my family never stopped him from getting off the boat. He just had to call and someone would have come to get him. And now, for OP's update. I put up the original post last night and never expected the response I got. Thank you to everyone who took the time to help me work through my own feelings and give advice. Also, thank you to everyone who is telling me that I was being a horrible person towards my husband. I appreciate the reality check. Now, the update. My husband found the post. He read though all of your comments too. When he got home from work this morning, we had a conversation about what's going on in his head recently and he called me out for being insensitive since the sailing trip as well. He told me that I have been withdrawn recently and not wanting to spend as much time with him. He also said that my fertile time was supposed to be while he was on the boat, which is why he is so convinced that I may have been with someone else. My fertile time doesn't appear to ever come when it's supposed to, it seems. He also tells me he has not cheated and I believe him. I am going to talk my doctor about doing a blood test for paternity as I refuse to do anything invasive, and we will start couples therapy soon. We'll see what happens next. It's good that you realize that you were kinda being a dickhead, OP. Look, you can't blame the dude for having doubts. In today's modern society, paternity fraud is all too common. 
plus given the information that you were, in fact, getting distant, which is a classic sign of cheating. With that information, it's not too far-fetched for him to arrive at that conclusion. Just get the test done and prove him wrong so you can both move on. And now for today's final story. When your racket with the local cops bites you in the ass internationally. Posted by Reddit user Tots 2 hots This happened a few years ago when I was serving overseas with the U.S. military. The location I was at was in a poor area. There's a fair number of panhandlers, a lot of petty crime and just people doing stupid crap. Well, one racket that goes on in this area and apparently in other areas of the country too is the local cops incentivize reporting vehicles with out-of-date inspection stickers. Apparently, they give these people access to the inspection database if they think the sticker is fake or stolen, which actually does happen. If you drive a motorcycle, one of the things they tell you when you in process is to keep the sticker in your wallet and not on the vehicle, or else it'll just get peeled off. Anyway, what these people will do if they find a car with an out-of-date sticker or if they run the plates and find it's out-of-date, they will jimmy the door open, steal every single thing out of the car and leave a note that they've taken it to the police station. The idea is that you show up at the police station to get your stuff and they force you to pay the fine for an overdue sticker and then give you a deadline for an inspection or else you'll get another fine. Well, I came out to my car one morning and lo and behold there was a note on my seat saying that all my stuff was at the local police station because my inspection sticker was fake and I had to go get it. Not only am I late for work, my kid is also going to be late for school because there's no bus and I have to drive her every morning on my way. Also, my inspection sticker is not out of date, so I have no idea what's going on. Now here's the thing that was extremely problematic was I had put my passport and my wife and kids in the glove box because I was taking them to the base to get some paperwork done, as well as grab some paperwork for my wife to apply for a new passport because hers was expired. I'm very forgetful so I put them in the night before and made sure the car was locked. Yeah, dumb mistake. Anyway I get to the station, ask them what the heck was going on and then when I have them look at the inspection documents that the guy had taken, which clearly stated the car had been inspected and was current, they apologized and told me that they would give my things back and I had to wait there for a second. I asked to file a police report for theft, but they looked at me like I had three heads and told me nothing was stolen, even though somebody broke into my car and took my things. This is when a light bulb went off in my head and this might fall into the unethical category. The guy had taken official US passports which might be a problem, but probably nothing would come of it since they were turned right into the police. However, I asked him where my wife's passport was. They told me that whatever is there is there. I said I needed a police report because I needed to contact the US Embassy about a stolen passport and the fact that this police station would know exactly who the person was that stole it because they had dropped off my things that morning. I have never seen someone's attitude change as quickly as that cop's attitude changed. He tried to talk me out of filing a police report but I was pretty insistent. So I went ahead with the police report and then I did contact the embassy and reported the passport stolen and gave them all the information of the police station. And when I got the police report, I emailed it to them as well. Wound up getting a free passport out of it for my trouble. The embassy told me they were going to handle it and from what I heard, the person who broke into my car actually got arrested and fined and was looking at additional charges because he stole foreign documents. Really would have liked to have been a fly on the wall when one of the local cops rolled into wherever he was at and told him to come with them. I don't feel bad at all. Hopefully dude learned his lesson and I did not have any further issues until I PCS home. OP, hopefully what you did save a few other people from the inconvenience of having their stuff stolen out of their own vehicle. But let's be honest here, they probably just stopped doing it to foreigners but kept doing it to the locals. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my channels for you to watch absolutely free. So please consider subscribing to me on Rumble and on YouTube. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, consider subscribing to Pat's Hunt to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.